All right. What's up? Welcome to a new episode of Cool Girls Create. And y'all, I'm so hyped because I got my favorite New Yorker in the building. Okay. A senior writer from Hollywood Unlocked, Deja Monet. Welcome. Welcome, Deja. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to to chat. Yeah. So this is a rechat because yeah, our, yes, a rechat and update. <laughs> yeah. So and and this is a, a a great segue into this conversation because as creators, mm-hmm. we have to deal with sometimes stuff getting messed up. And so Deja and I had a conversation um, for the podcast like two years ago, y'all, and all of my episodes got deleted. And so we never got to air it, but we had such a good conversation. Um, So she's back and she understands because this is what happens when you're a creator. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the conversation. So the last time we chatted, you were just moving into your new apartment in New York Mm -hmm. um I don't remember how long you had been with Hollywood Unlocked but I would love to start with um how you got into writing oh okay so initially I had a blog and I wasn't consistent with it this is back when people were using blogger and tumblr and I frequented tumblr just to write my thoughts out and things like that but I always had an interest in writing even ever since I was like in first grade like I always did little short stories and things like that and I always loved to read but once I got into high school I went to fashion industries high school and I'm really into fashion like I'm like heavy into it like I buy sneakers I wear different aesthetics and things like that I lean towards like the alt aesthetic but I always wanted to do fashion journalism but I realized like there wasn't a lot like back then it was so hard to get into those spaces like because you know it was more editorial and magazines and print and things like that so I had to take like a different step you know a different direction Also, I went to community college. I didn't get into the college I wanted to for writing. And I dropped out like several times. I'm not going to lie. I I did. (laughs) And then um, I just started writing on blogger and things like that. And then once Instagram came out, I started posting pictures. And then I started posting like celebrity stuff. And then Hollywood Unlocked like commented on one of them. And then I was saying to myself, you know, let me just hit them up. And this was like in 2016. Okay, 2016. It's 2016. If you told me in 2016 that Hollywood Unlock would be where it's at right now, I wouldn't even believe it. Like, and I started with Hollywood Unlock when I was around, I think maybe 26 years old. I'm 32. So it's been like a journey, literally like a journey for me because like around the time, like I was also in like a toxic relationship and I was still figuring things out and you know Hollywood Unlock took my mind off of those things so it helped me grow as a person as well but um you know like it it just having my chance and now it's 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 a it's a huge thing it's a huge media yeah. outlet you know you're like, a senior writer at one of the biggest like um I, I say at this point, when it comes to social media and blogs and all of that stuff, it's it's really a news source yeah. at this point. Um, so six years. So there's been a six year journey so far. And that now see, that's the realty because in your twenties, things are a lot different from when you transition into your thirties, especially with the career. So let's talk about that. What are some of the things that you feel like you learned on this journey with this growing brand right because this isn't just like some you know local newspaper or local blog this is um a nationwide you know publication or platform so what has it been like for you as a writer to transition on your journey well first of all I had to get my typing skills up because stories they come like this I really had to like I type like this now people don't even believe it even on my phone I type like this it's it's crazy because I had to learn how to write on my phone I had to learn how to write on my computer I learned I had to learn how to write within like 15 20 minutes if it's like a breaking story um 
you know, other things I've learned, I've learned to be consistent because if you are not consistent, you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to grow as a person. Like I really had to be focused because I tend to procrastinate and my procrastination is like, I'll sit down for 30 minutes and then 30 minutes turns into like three hours. And it's, it's really got me. It's really got no, me. That's it's real. Yeah. It, it really put me in the groove to be busy, you know, because in this industry, you have to be quick minded. If you're not quick minded, you're not going to get ahead. You're not going to be in the loop. I mean, sometimes I always say being in a loop is a good thing, but also being in the loop means you have to be aware of what's going on. Because if you're not aware of what's going on, you're not going to get your facts straight. You're not going to get the story correct. You're not going to get the information well structured, you know? So mm -hmm. that's what I learned. Another thing I've learned is um, I didn't expect so many people. I know we're talking about right, but I, I didn't expect so many people to follow me on Instagram. Like, I didn't expect why 30, I didn't expect 37,000 people to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> because why, girl? I, I don't know because I, I just feel like like I feel like I'm in my influencer era now because now brands are hitting me up and they're asking me to like promote their stuff. And I'm currently like a creator for Wish. Like I'm doing like like I told you with the fashion stuff, like I had to put that on the side, but now it's coming in full circle. Now I'm doing the things that I really like to do is writing and fashion and it's, it's becoming like a huge, is like, is surreal to me. So like, like I said, it's like the main thing I had to learn is consistency because if I wasn't being consistent, I don't think I would be where I am right now. I don't think I'll be speaking to you. I don't think I'll be on this platform writing stories for like millions of people to read. Even if it's on a national level, I've had people from like, I think I wrote a story and about something that happened in Guyana and someone hit me up and was like, I'm, I'm so thankful that you put this out there because nobody's talking about it. Like mm -hmm. I would pick stories that nobody is talking about. Like there'd be times like I can write a story and the next day it's like, you got TMZ, you got all these other blogs writing about it because nobody looks for the stuff. I look for the stuff that nobody's going to talk about. You well, know? yeah. Okay. So we're going we gonna to talk about that because I do, I would love to hear about like your process and finding stories and keeping up. But it was, it was something that you said that struck me when you were talking about your journey. So um, you talked about like having to be consistent. And then you also mentioned that it's funny how now you're doing the things that you want to do as a creator, which is fashion um, and having a platform as an influencer. And I think that that's very interesting because a lot of times we're taught to go after a job or a career and not necessarily what we're passionate about. But I think that it's great that you became basically you use your skill to become more visible. And because you were consistent with that, now you're able to circle back and do the things that you want to do. And I don't think a lot of creators understand that because we're always trying to do everything at once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about you being consistent. Is there anything that you had to work on or any tricks or, or uh, practices that you've used to help yourself become more consistent and stay on track? as a creator well I had to ingrain in my mind that I had to write a certain number of stories by the end of the the day so if I know by the time I get home from my other job that I have to write four stories I know I have to start looking for stuff maybe an hour before so I have an idea of what I'm gonna do and also for me, like another strategy I use to be consistent is that I, like I said, I have to time myself because my time management, oh Jesus, <laughs> my time management, I'm still working on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a art. It never stops. That's the only thing I can say, like time management, I'm still working on it, but I had to learn how to juggle a lot of things. Like if I know I'm going to an event I have to at least put up maybe two stories just so it's, you know, it's balanced on the site. If I know that if someone asks me to go out, I have to tell them I'm not going out. I have work to do. Like I can't, I cannot, because I know if I'm 
you know, if I'm distracted, I'm not going to get any work done by the time I get home. I'm not going to be able to complete my tax task for the day. Uh, and another thing is sometimes I write things down to, you know, to help me get the flow going. And also just, I, it may sound weird, but just staying on my phone, just to have an idea of what I'm going to write. Oh, <laughs> like, so wait, wait, wait. You said staying on your phone? Yeah, like staying on Instagram, just seeing what's going oh, on. Seeing what the conversations are about, mm -hmm. what what's in the mix, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you feel like that's very important as a writer or someone who's like covering the daily news is to like be abreast of what's mm -hmm. going on in the world. So going back to you finding stories that nobody else are really looking for. Now, I don't want you to tell any trade secrets, but I do right. want you to share, you know, with like aspiring writers, um, things that would help you help them in their process to become a better writer. Um, well, I would always tell people to look on, you could look on Twitter you can also look on Reddit. I mean, Reddit is such a great source of stuff that you can use to find um, stories. Even if you have nothing to write, you can always look on Reddit. And I, I've seen people do it all the time. Like they'll look at a Reddit post and they turn it into a story. Like you can, or you could look on message forums or like I said, even on Twitter, TikTok is now, someone can make a TikTok about, I don't know. I think one girl said she moved from florida to virginia and then she found out that she didn't get the job but she didn't find out until like a week later and it just became like a whole big thing and then people you know like you can make a story around that so it's just different ways of using the resources that you already have to you know to be a to be a better writer because if you don't use your resources how are you gonna grow you know so that's my but you know that's one thing I can suggest. Another thing is I use Grammarly. I use Grammarly. To, <laughs> <The cat. laughs> I use Grammarly. This is you. You. I use Grammarly to um make sure my work is correct because, oh child, that's the one thing people will come at you for is if your grammar and your spelling and your syntax and everything is not structured they are coming for you they will send you a dm saying you are the worst writer in the world you need to your date. oh yes <laughs> I, the audacity oh i i i oh girl yes <laughs> oh my gosh i can't believe people sending you messages they done found the writer on the story and like uh-uh girl mm -hmm. oh i've got emails oh oh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh they don't well, like if they don't like something you wrote, oh, they will send you an email or they will tag you. I even, it's gotten to the point, I had to turn my notification, I had to turn like a mention off because it gets, it gets crazy. People mm -hmm. will get crazy, you know? And you're just yeah. doing your job, you know? That's where I feel like people do not, that's where people don't find the fine line when it comes to that because people don't understand it's your, this is my job, okay? But this is not who I am as a person. You cannot say I'm biased or I'm saying the wrong thing when I'm just simply doing what I'm, you know, I'm reporting. To, reporting, yes. Not told to do, but reporting, you know. Yeah. So I um, yeah, you know, it listen, it's a lot. It's you have to be very um, you have to be very thick skin too and that was a lot for me to to deal with also because I am a very I can say I'm a sensitive person but being What's your in sign? A, I'm, I'm a, a I'm a sign person you said Pisces I'm a Pisces okay okay yes I I am a Pisces and you know we are very empathetic we take things Sometimes we we tend to take things personal. I had to learn not to take anything personal because if I took if I took anything people were saying personal, I don't think I would get where I am today. You know, like I know I saw a quote, not a quote, but I saw a clip by Doja Cat where she was like, you know, if you like something, just put it out. Who cares? Who's gonna, if they don't like it, oh well, at least you you put it out there, you know? 
Yeah, it's- and I I find that with a lot of creators and including myself, I've really had to like shed that attitude of caring about how people interpret me, my art, my personality, my accomplishments because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like it's not about anybody else and you only have one life as a creator. So the sooner yeah. that you can realize what you're saying, like you can't take it personally, the better it is for you as a creator, I think. Yeah. And like considering, cause you know, I'm from the Bronx, born and raised in the Bronx. BX. Yeah, BX. Like <laughs> I had to really, you know, that's, I'm, that is something I had to really learn at an early age. You know, I know people say people, you know, people who grew up in New York, they had to grow up fast. And, but no, this is how I had to, you know, I had to think quick. I had to develop some thick skin. You know, like I always say my mother drilled certain, you know, certain values into me. Like you want to get something, you need to work for it. If you can't sit back and allow people to say what they want about you, they're going to not at the end of the day, they're not going to like what you're doing. They're not going to always like you. You're not, you know, I had to, every time I feel like I'm about to reach that moment of being discouraged, I I, I listened to my mom, what she always used to tell me growing up, you know, like, cause even like growing up, I was one of those, not a shy kid, but I was just different. Like I was into different things. Like, you know how people expect you because you're black, you're supposed to be into right. things, but you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I was, I was always the you know awkward kid into yep. dirty stuff. I like rock music. I'm into golf shit. Like it's it's all kinds of things. And yeah, being in this industry, I use all that experience growing up, and I applied it to here. You know, and you know people like my colleague always says, "Oh, people gravitate to you so much, Deja." I don't know why, but it's just something about you that makes people want to like every time we step into an event, someone is some someone is like, "Oh my god!" Like you're so I love I love what you're wearing I love what you're doing this and I'm like okay I just met you like <laughs> you, you yeah. know it, it's, it's you know it's things I think like people, that go ahead no no you go ahead I was just gonna say people gravitate to people who are comfortable in their own skin because it's so hard to be that and I think a lot of times when you are outcasted or like um I just I just came to the conclusion that I was a nerd or that I am a nerd. Okay. So I like reading. I was into goth stuff. I was like out fantasy, you know, sci-fi, all the things that the kids around me were like, girl, no. So I think when you're an outsider, it's like you have to learn throughout your life to like be able to adapt. And by the time you're like in your thirties, like us now, Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm just me, baby. So mm-hmm. take it to leave. Look at the look at the cat. <laughs> look. No, we're gonna keep this in here too. Yeah, yes. Please keep it. She is the let me, let me tell you something. When I do a TikTok, everybody knows who this is. Everybody <laughs> in the comments, I have one friend, Jay. He'd be like, hey, you, you, I see you. Oh <laughs> if, well, if I post her on Instagram. We'd be like, oh, you use modeling, right? Like, this is the star. This is the star of the show. Like, she is right. She is the star. I had her since she was six weeks old. So, oh, this is this is my this is my baby. Literally my baby. But she's I don't know why she she having her moment right now. I'm gonna let her have her moment because you know you reminded me. This is reminding me of Claudia Jordan and her cat on a uh, TGIF. <laughs> she's always on the screen. But oh, okay. she I guess she's done. <laughs> so okay. So the last time we chatted, you were like moving into your apartment and it was a different time, right? It was a different time. Um, I think you were still figuring out things with your role. But um I wanted to ask, um, how is it balancing? So you you know, you, you're you a writer, but you mentioned several times that you still have like a another job at a school and you have like your influencer thing going on. So how do you balance the things? I know I heard you talk about time management is a struggle, but. Um, so let's add another notch on that, though. I am also in grad school. So girl, <laughs> what you going to grad school for? Oh, I'm getting a 
I'm getting a master's in adolescent education. Okay, so, cool. So you're yeah. also in grad school. You did mention that when we talked in the DM. So um, what? how are you balancing this? Well, my school is online, so that makes life so much easier. But I do a lot of my work during my lunch. I do my homework during my lunch break. Um, I remember I read it in an Essence article by Aaliyah's face. I don't know if you watch her, but she says, like, if you're passionate about something and you want to get it done, do it during your lunch. If you have time, do do it during your lunch break. And that's what I've been doing. I do my homework during lunch. I do, like, my classwork um before you know clap the students come in like I try to make sure that is on point because I have a GP at my GPA right now is 4.0 so I you know in grad school you can't you, <laughs> you can't play games you cannot play any game <laughs> nope, but you know it you know you, like, <laughs> you can't play you cannot so, play. so when it comes to um your career in general, where do you see yourself going? Like, what is the ultimate goal for you? Um, you know, it's an interesting question because I do plan to become a literacy specialist, but I, as far as my creator journey, I'm just going with the flow. And I feel like if things really take off, I, I would, you know, I would probably maybe lean towards that direction, but I don't also want to give up like my career as an educator because I do, I love what I do working with teenagers and I want it to be, you know, I want to make a difference in this world as well. And also, um, you know, cause I also work in my own community. So I just, I don't know, like, I know it's like some people are like, well, screw it I'm gonna go and be a full-time such and such and then like they come back and they're like oh my god I don't know why I did that but it's okay to make mistakes but I just I just want to make sure that my life is um structured and I have uh I have a foundation and I have like a sustainable source of income because considering you know, I live in New York City. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. And I want to make sure that I'm able to afford to keep a roof over my head. I want to be able to make sure I have food in my fridge. I want to make sure like I'm able to, you know, have a, somewhere to sleep at night and things like that. So I just want to, I, I just want to make sure things are balanced out. So I don't want to just take leaps and then I'm just like, oh shit, like what, <laughs> what, what did I do? You know, I, I just want to make sure I'm good, you know, because yeah. I know I know in our previous conversation, we spoke about that. We spoke about people moving to places like New York and L.A. and they just think, oh, I'm going to be an intern at such and such and I'm going to live with three roommates and I'm going to make it work. But it's like it's OK to have a regular job. There is nothing wrong with you working. I mean, I don't there's nothing wrong with you working retail. If you got to work retail and do your influencer stuff on and build your influencer career on the side, that's fine. As long as you have money in your pocket, you should you should be okay. You know, I don't think I don't think in this day and age you should just completely walk into something with no type of income. This we it, you see the economy. The economy is terrible right now. We have mm -hmm. to we have to work two to three jobs just to get by and things like that. So that's like. That's one of the biggest things I always tell people who also hit me up for advice. And I'm just like, you know, keep doing what you're doing, but make sure you have a steady source of income. Because if your income isn't steady, you're not going to be happy. You, you're not going to be, you're not going to enjoy what you do at all, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, people don't talk about that um, in general because social media has, Social media portrays or people portray on social media that mm -hmm. fast life is easy. You know, you can be a creator, you can be a full time entrepreneur and the money is just falling off trees and you just rolling in diamonds. That's <laughs> like that's the perception. And it's like as a full time entrepreneur and I'm going into my sixth year with this thing. So I did yeah. what you said don't do, which was like go full force into it and 
inconsistent income and late nights worrying about how you're going to make things work. The journey is something that I would never give up because I'm really passionate. And I feel like this is where God wants me to be, but I'm not going to just tell everybody that this is for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're definitely right. Like, make sure you have income, make sure you have a plan and make sure you're being strategic because I see a lot of people get up and move to different places thinking that when they get there, it's just going to be like some magical, I don't know, experience where they're on top of the world. And then they realize that it doesn't work that way. No, it, it really not, not in this day and age, unless you're one of those people who happen to live in the, you know, in the major cities and you live with your parents and you can do whatever, you know, you can do yeah. whatever you want because, you know, living with your parents, that's a different, I mean, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different thing in itself. Cause I lived with my mother before I moved out and, <laughs> you know, you got to listen to certain rules and stuff, but you're in, you know, your financial situation is different because you could do things freely as opposed to when you live on your own and you're like, mm, well, can't buy that bag today. Maybe I'll buy it in a few months after I, you know, get this house together. Yeah, you got to be responsible. It's like adulting, you know what I'm saying? And um, <laughs> there was this, it's this conversation that's going around right now. Like is 30, the new 20 or, um, should you have it all together by 30? And I was thinking to myself, like, in my 20s, like, I, when I left home at 17, I didn't go back, right? 17. But I went to college. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Right? right? So after I went to college, like, I didn't go back home. But my 20s were a time for me to, like, have more freedom and figure things out. And a lot of people don't really use their 20s for that. So then when you get to your 30s, you're like kind of lost in the sauce. And I don't know if it's like 30 is the new 20. I just feel like if you have a support system, which is easier in your 20s, because when you're like 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, your family's like, come on over here. Come on <laughs> over here and eat. I'll give you some money for gas. Boy, right. you hit that big 3-0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, my family, well, my family is very close-knit, and I was raised mostly, my family is very matriarchal. Like it's like it's my grandma, my mom, my aunt, then it's me, then it's my cut my cousin and my sis. Like it's just all women, you know. So my family's very close knit. They're very supportive, but you know, my fam my mother, well, especially my grandmother has instilled in me to always have my own, always make sure you're good. Don't worry about, you know, even if you're with somebody, don't stress about what they have to give you make sure you're good because at the end of the day all you have is you you know and like even my great grandma when she was alive she used to tell us you want to say you know even if you ha don't have much to say put away twenty dollars a week and you can build your you know build your little fund up and that I still I do that sometimes but um 30 is a new 20 I tell people all the time I feel like I'm gonna I'm a teenager in an adult body because with adult money I could buy the things I wasn't able to buy when I was, when I was 15 years old yeah but I, that's, you know <laughs> but I feel like that's mm -hmm. nobody tells you what it's like to be an adult like they used to say um don't grow up too fast you know um all right when you get out there you're gonna see how it really is but that was all the context that I feel like I got and now it's like yeah, it feels like you're still a child trying to figure out the world, but you're you have to be responsible and accountable. So, yeah. so let's switch uh, gears a little bit and talk about uh, a question that I get a lot, and that I'm curious about when it comes to breaking into the industry. In the industry, I'm doing this the air quote thing. If you are listening and not watching, but the industry is. I guess, music, entertainment, television, that whole thing. Do you have any uh, thoughts about 
someone who is newly trying to break into the industry and make a name for themselves as a creator? What are your thoughts? Um, I think since we're in the age of social media, I think people now are able to build their own platforms, you know, on without... It's not like back then when people had to like apply for internships, they had to apply for um like jobs within this industry, you know, industry, because that's a broad <laughs> term, because now you can just wake up one day and be like, you know what, I'm going to start my own, I'm going to start my own Hollywood Unlocked, I'm going to make my own page and I'm going to just start writing stuff. Like I've seen mean I'm talking about meme pages that I've followed since like 2014 and now they have like 20 million followers they're getting <laughs> like they're getting ad ad revenue and you know partnerships and things like that like I feel like with social media we are able to do these things without having someone else backing up backing it up you know so um I know but for people who really want to break into this industry, I really suggest also networking because you never know where you're going to go. If you meet, you, you may never know. You could be at a, like a, you know, like a mixer. You could meet somebody from like, say someone who wants to break into the music industry and you want to do A&R or something like that. You never know. You could meet someone who works at Sony and, you know, y'all chatting it up and things like that. And then they'll be like, oh, hey, you know, I had a really nice time meeting you. I'm going to shoot you some emails and connect you with some people who would love to, you know, work with you and things like that. So it's it's about networking. It's about um, also having, you, you know, building your own foundation. It's also, you got to be, you know, confident in what you do as well. Like you have to have sheer confidence when you want to build your own platform and putting your yourself out there because I know a few years ago I never I love taking pictures of myself but I never liked talking on the camera I never liked <laughs> I I never liked speaking I used to think I hate the sound of my own voice like I I had all those things but now I'd be on if I see something going on on TikTok and I feel like I hey listen this is how I feel about X Y you know it's just that that idea of just putting yourself out there. Because if you don't put yourself out there, who who's going to do it for you? No one's going to do that. Exactly. And I think a lot of people struggle with um, being, well, I guess putting, their, putting themselves out there because they don't want to be judged, you know? And it's like, you if you don't, if you're not willing to take any risk on yourself, then nobody else is going to, take any type of step towards you know supporting you or anything like that I think it's interesting that you mentioned the networking thing because uh, most creators and entrepreneurs that I meet they're in a bubble and they don't network at all and I was just thinking about me and you like I literally just on a whim was like I really like her writing I'm just gonna send her a message and see if she responds and you did you know so it's like (laughs) I took the chance but you could have read it it kept on going or ignored it. but it was like <laughs> why not give it a shot you know what I'm saying and I feel like if more people were willing to bet on themselves um it would be a, a lot more happier a lot more happy people yeah more. and plus I also like helping women I follow mostly women because I you know from my personal experience I feel like with men when men want to put themselves out there in this industry and stuff, they always want to flirt with you. They always want to, you know, they first, they be like, oh, hey, sexy, what's up? How you doing? You know, I love your writing and da da da. Then the next message is, oh, can you help me get into Hollywood? Can you get me this? Can you? Excuse me? Are you me? serious? Yes, I'm very serious. I am so serious. I, I... <laughs> Girl, let me tell you something. And this is like in any male, any male creatives out there, especially the ones that you're, you want to get into the music industry. This is, that is not the way to go. I, this, that is not the way to go. Don't try to flirt with me to get into, uh, um, to get noticed. I'm not that type of girl. You could just be like, Hey, you know, 
how can I, you know, put my music out there? I can connect you to the person who will post you on our page and there you go. But, you know, you doing all that extra stuff, calling me sexy, call, you know, doing this, doing that, just to, it, it doesn't make any sense. And then sometimes I notice people, they think that you have certain connections and they, um, they just automatically think you're just going to put them you're just going to put them on. Like, I don't even know you. You never even, you never even commented on a photo. You never even liked a post. I never see you, you don't know, like we don't like, if say if I post a story and you laugh and we have, we have so many conversations about that. And then it's just a, Hey, you know, what's up? Can you help? No, it's not organic. When it's not organic, yeah. I cannot I cannot, I can't, I can't help you out. That's, and I, I know I sound blunt, but it's like, I can't help you out if it's not organic. I feel like with women, we're more straightforward. We're more like, hey, can you help me with this? I, you know, I really want your advice. I don't, you know, I feel like it's, it's natural because, you know, we're very, I feel like women were more empathetic too. We'd be like, oh yeah, girl, let, let me put you on to this. Da, da, da. You know, we're not, we don't gatekeep, you know? I know well. it's, it is, yeah, there are a lot of there, there are some gatekeepers. <laughs> there are some gatekeepers though. There are some female gatekeepers because I've I've experienced it. Like <laughs> I've yeah. experienced it and I'll just be like, you know what? I'll figure it. I'm gonna figure it out through someone else. So I'll just learn it on YouTube. I I, I don't know. Like I, I just like I feel like also to um <clears throat> everybody is all about aesthetics as well like aesthetics like yeah hate. explain but what 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 do you <clears throat> like what do you mean they're into it like that's the only thing they care about is like they, they like optics optics like oh like i'm gonna go here to this event and take a picture and then leave mm -hmm. or i'm gonna go pose mm -hmm. with this person because mm -hmm. it looks good yeah but there's it's no substance there's no it's like bro you know like and I've been stopped by people in the street. They'd be like, you Deja? And I'm like, the first person I said, how do you know me? They'd be like, oh, I, I follow you or I've seen you on Hollywood a lot. I really like your stuff. Like, I love things like that because you never know I could help you out in the future. But when it's just like you, ooh, I have a story of when I went to, um, I went to a toy drive with a fame, it was a celebrity, um, and, you know, some guy saw me. I said hi to him or whatever. Nothing crazy. I go home. I come home. I look at my DMs the following day. The guy was like, oh, it was nice meeting you at the party. First of all, I never told you who I was. I, all I said was, was Deja. I never told you who I worked for. Who, you know, like who I, <laughs> I never even gave an Instagram name, like, Things like that, that freaks me out. Like, I, I just be like, no. <laughs> so like, is that like a new thing that's happening because you have more visibility? Like, you have to really distinguish between genuine relationships and people who are trying to use you or what they deem is a connection. And I yeah. remember, it's interesting because I remember when we first chatted, and that was something that came up where... Um, you mentioned that like and that's an interesting experience to have you know how does that affect you like I guess personally um I'm the type of person I don't I feel like if you're honest about your intentions listen I, I I'm cool with it but if you do it in a way where it's not genuine and you're just hanging around me because you think I'm going to get you into certain spaces and all that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm I'm going to act like you don't not, not exist, but I'm just act. I'm going to just brush you off. Okay. I'm, so yeah. <laughs> um, Let's close this out with this one last thing, which is relationships. And you mentioned networking before, um, a lot of people, you know, say you need to network, you need to network, you need to network. But the missing link to that is, is not just about meeting new people. It's about building those organic, authentic relationships. And I think that that's a lost art um, really when it comes to, you know, in general, 
I think, especially in, I guess, in the creator culture, because everybody's trying to, everybody has an angle, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, it, it really is a lost art because it's like, you want to build relationships just so you can also have people who look out for you. You know, like, there are people... I met so many people, they know, like, I'm into, like, fashion and sneakers and stuff. They'll send me an, they'll send me a link to sign and be like, hey, you want to come to this? Come. I'll put you on the list. Or, uh, like, if I know somebody is into, like, if someone's into the same thing I'm into, I'll be like, hey, I'm going to this event. You should RSVP to it. You never, you know, like, I'll, you know, get in, you know, do this. You should get, put yourself out there. If you're interested in these things put yourself out there because and or you know you need to have somebody that will look out and so you can network more put yourself out there more you can um develop better you know develop more relationships with people in different spaces and things like that and even develop a friendship sometimes network doesn't always have to be networking doesn't always have to be about business you could build a friendship i am friends with people i mean i made good friends with like people that I never met in person and they are people who have followed my work. We have conversations every single day. They, it, it, like, you know, I think being organic will take you very far in life. If you're not being organic, you're not being yourself. You're not going to go very far in this life. You're going to crumble. You're going, you're definitely, you're going to crumble. You're, you're not going <laughs> to, you're not going to make it far. And that was a lesson for me to learn because I remember there were times I was trying to be somebody I wasn't and I was not happy about it. And I was just like, you know what? If I'm going to post about gaming, I'm going to post about it. Who cares if they, you know, they don't agree with it. I'm going to post about fashion too. I'm going to do what I'm going to talk about things that I like. And if nobody likes it, somebody's going to like it, you know, like being right. is going to take you very far, you know? And I, that's that's all I can say about that's all I can say about that you know I've I've seen and one more tidbit like I I can talk about this go ahead girl like I've seen now even in the influencers social media space I've seen everybody do the same aesthetics and optics the beige the grays the 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 Lululemon the the tight you know like everything like everything everybody looks the same to me and I'm just like I'm like how does anybody how do you stand out because it seemed mm-hmm. like also it seemed like also brands pick those same people too and it's like well damn how do you stand out if everybody else looks the same yeah and- you know what it is as um someone like I just came off of a year-long creative block so I wasn't really doing anything creative because I found myself going on social media and then seeing what was working and I'm like well do I need to do that like Mm -hmm. what is this You, you know what I'm saying I feel like a lot of people fall into that trap of doing what what everybody else is doing because they feel like it's working for them but not realizing it's working for them because it's for them (laughs) and you have to find what is for you as a creator and you have to find your people your niche your industry and you can't do that if you're trying to be somebody else you really can't and like I I also started a YouTube channel so I talk about (laughs) I talk about I talk about bags and I talk about gaming and I remember I asked like one of those YouTube gurus some advice about how to grow my channel and then they were like oh no you can't really do fashion and gaming because your audience is gonna get confused and they're not gonna understand they're not gonna because it's so two different niches and I'm like why the hell not why can't I why can't I just why can't I just I'm not aiming for a million followers I'd be fine if I had a thousand followers as long as I build a community of like-minded people I'm mm-hmm. good, you know, and I'm trying to be me. I'm doing things that I would like. And um, like I follow this YouTuber. Her name is Juno Birch. She is uh she is uh uh she plays the Sims and she dresses like 
an alien from the 1950s, like the Mars, like the Mars. I attack. know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Like she is like that's her persona, and she only she'll post about makeup and the sins, and it works. It works for her, and I'm just because like we're it's, dynamic people. Yeah. Like, I I feel like that Deja like seriously I feel like that was my struggle for a long time like people would would make comments of like okay you're over here but you do this or you're trying to do that and when I was trying to figure out my YouTube and my in my um content it's like I don't want to put myself in a box I like I like fashion I like tech stuff I like geek stuff <laughs> you know what I'm saying I like yeah. books so it's like if I want to talk about that why can't I talk about that because you feel like your audience is going to get overwhelmed your audience is people and people are dynamic they have multiple interests you know so yeah. that's that's interesting that that's what we're we, we are being told as creators that you have to do like one thing and put yourself in a box yeah I put I never put myself in a box I never that was never like that that was never my thing when I was growing up. I liked every like a lot of things from my music to my fashion. I liked everything. So to tell somebody they gotta be confined is like, no, I wanna be, you know, I'm gonna do what I like and things like that. I think that's maybe also I think that's why maybe a lot of people follow me on Instagram because I just post whatever and I <laughs> I go yeah. and you know, I think that's what it is too, because I'm like, I always had this thought, like, why would they follow someone like me for, you know, like I'm just some regular person, but then I would, people would DM me and be like, oh yeah, I like your style. I like how you do this. I love how you're into video games. I love how you do, you know, like I'm, that's the thing that keeps me going. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just keep going, you know? I mean, shoot, I'm in my boyfriend on Instagram. So <laughs> <laughs> look, she has a, look I know that's right but I was gonna say like um dang what did you just say you just said um you post like video games and stuff like that I mean it's just if you're into the same oh that's what it is a lot of people feel like they're alone so when they find people on social media or in real life that they they're like oh you're into that too I thought I was the only one it feels good like people just want community so all of this overthinking is like I'm over it child yeah, okay it. so let's close out the episode because I feel like me and you could just we could just chat oh we could just day. chat all day <laughs> look so um if you could leave our cool girls or the creators and up and coming um you know aspiring people who want to just follow their dreams a message or you know some inspiration what would you say I would say the ultimate key to navigating whether it's life or this industry is just being yourself and everything else will fall into place it may not happen at the pace you want it to but if you continue doing what you like and just staying true to what to who you are, you're gonna go far. And that's the best advice I can always give. And always and another thing is just keep learning. I learn every day. I love learning about <laughs> how to get my camera angles right, how to, to listen. I learn how to what did I I learned how to master cap cut the other day. Like I finally got cap cut together. So <laughs> did you download like, the uh do, do you did you download it to your mac like are you using uh, the desktop version or just the i have phone? i have the mac version i have the de the pc version i have the phone i have the ipad <laughs> I, <do> it. <laughs> I, I i mastered listen i know how to do tiktok like yeah. yeah that's great advice that's great advice and i agree with that especially with being like a lifelong learner i think when you feel like you know it all or um, you don't feel like there's nothing out there that you can improve upon, that's like, you're stuck. You're just, you're going to be stagnant. So I believe that's great advice. All right. So y'all, we just had a dope conversation with Deja. I'm probably going to have to invite you back, but we're going to have to do like something regularly because we got great chemistry and we'll be chatting y'all. Um oh, yeah. And we could get deep too, because our previous conversation, we got deep. 
Um, oh, yeah. That was we great. Got... We had a great, that was great. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Cool Girls Create. Uh, I am so happy and ecstatic that Deja joined us today. Um, and I will see y'all on the next episode. T. Westbrook and Deja signing out. Bye, Bye y'all. <laughs>